Hello and welcome to Car Dealer Live. Uh, today we're lucky to be joined by Bill Berman, CEO of dealer group Pendragon. Hello, Bill. Hey, Jay. How are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us on what is quite a big news day, really. Not Absolutely. just for yourselves, but, uh, but also the industry as a whole, really. Everything seems to be breaking this week. Um, but can you, just, can you just give us an overview of what you've announced today, please? Yeah, um, you know, it's somewhat bittersweet. Um, obviously, we've uh, announced today that we're shutting down 15 stores, um, and we're going to um, unfortunately lose 400 people um, that are currently operating within those stores. And then we also announced our restructuring of our store model, uh, our central uh, office, our home office model, as well as our regional structure and management model um, with another uh, 1,400 um, positions that are, are going to be leaving the business. Um, you know, the somewhat upside or positive side to that is uh, on a run rate basis, um, once we get through with our redundancy charges and stuff, it'll be an annual savings of approximately 40 million pounds. So, um, you know, we went into this, uh, you know, pre, uh, pre lockdown and pre COVID doing a strategic review. Obviously, with the lockdown, it gave us the time to really put some effort and attention to this. Um, so we looked through it, built up store models, looked at how the business has come out since uh, lockdown has ended and uh, you know, put together a, a new operating, a new business model. And we feel it's gonna give us the ability to compete um, and not only survive, but thrive um, um, going forward. And you know, we learned a lot of uh, valuable lessons uh, during lockdown and even um, coming back uh, you know, out of that and opening it up in June with a high percentage of our, of our transactions now being done online, um, uh, several efficiencies and productivity gains within our stores that have been able to facilitate this. Yeah. Now, um, you know, a number of dealer groups have announced redundancies and restructuring plans in the past few weeks. Is this the grim reality we find ourselves now in? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's an adage in good times you develop bad habits and in bad times you develop good habits. And, um, you know, over time we had a creep in our industry and in positions and, uh, you know, we kind of uh, peaked at uh, in 2016 and, and there wasn't a lot of adjustments um, once we hit kind of peak new car volume. And uh, as you know, reality start to come into play, things like the pandemic, um, Brexit, which um, is, you know, no one's really talking about right now, but that is gonna be something that affects our industry um, to a high level. Uh, you know, you have to sit here and constantly look at your business and whether it's, uh, you know, you have to add people to grow it or you have to sometimes, uh, you, know, you know, contract a little bit to sit here and give you a better business and operating model. And uh, unfortunately, we've had to do the latter versus the former, but um, I, I see more of it. And, and I see the same thing probably gonna happen um, on the OEM side. You've seen a lot of reductions on them. Lots of them are gonna are been calling it out. Um, my guess is over the next several months, um, everybody will have some type of restructuring cost savings plan. They're gonna have to, the cash burn has been too big um, during the lockdown periods and uh, everyone's kind of in that same boat. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, do you think you, we're gonna be seeing some more manufacturers pulling out of Europe? Uh, I, I wouldn't be, you know what, I, I, uh, two years ago, I never thought PSA and Fiat would have joined, um, in, you know, in a million years, right? And, uh, you know, 12 or 15 years ago, I wouldn't have seen Fiat uh, taking over Chrysler. So uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if um, somebody did or didn't come in and out, uh, out of a marketplace. Um, it's like PSA and, and Fiat combining. I could see them looking at things differently over time as well, too. They have a lot of brands that compete against each other. Does that stay the same way it is? You know, maybe, maybe not. I think you saw Mercedes Benz in North America announced they're, you know, reducing their model lines by seven entire model lines going out. Um, I, I think you're going to see a lot more of, of those types of announcements and people relooking at their businesses because, you know, once again, uh, everyone's kind of financially constrained right now and you got to look where the best place to operate is and where you're going to get the best return on your investment. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, in particular with Mitsubishi announced this week, you know, it's a small company in terms of UK sales, but as we know, it's part of a, a massive yep. alliance around the world. You know, this is, gonna, this is gonna affect big brands as well, even though we're gonna be moving into a future where there's gonna be big super brands, yep. you know, big alliances and manufacturers. Yep. It's going to hit everybody this, really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, James, I mean, look at what Ford announced just uh, the month before lockdown. Um, they were going to get rid of half of their UK stores. And, um, you know, they're obviously, you know, self-owned, the largest Ford dealer in the country. And, and they're looking to reduce as well and improve their network. And some of our store closures, uh, I can't get into which ones, but some of those were facilitated by the OEMs um, to improve their network. And I think they're all going to be looking at their network. Uh, the requirements where they feel they may be uh, underrepresented in other places where they feel they're overrepresented. I think there's going to be, uh, you know, fewer dealers. And I think there's going to be, you know, lower volumes. 
And the way I look at it, James, is the pie is going to get smaller. I just want to get a bigger piece of, of that smaller pie. And my guess is the OEMs and, uh, you know, our retail competitors are looking at it in the same light. Yeah, yeah. Um, how, how was the business looking before lockdown? So we had started off the year very, very strong. Um, you know, uh, January and February were, you know, we were exceeding our internal targets. Um, you know, the business was, was going in, in, in a good way. Some of that was market driven. A lot of that we had already seen some efficiencies and, and some decisions that we had made the end of last year. Um, you know, shortly after I came in and some decisions that may have been just prior to that actually taking hold and starting to return. Um, so we were very optimistic. Um, and then obviously in March hit and uh, you started seeing things going a little, you know, uh, cattywampus out there. And then obviously, um, you know, lockdown came in. But, you know, we took advantage of the lockdown, James. We sat here um, and, you know, after we got the store shut down and, and opened up the, you know, the service facilities for, uh, you know, the key workers, we sat here and really got to work and we built digital capabilities. Um, you know, we can sit here and sell uh, a used vehicle 100% online through all of our stores and all of our brands now. And we'll be able to do that same thing with new vehicles in the next several months. Um, stem to stern, in inclusive of everything. Uh, to give you an example, um, you know, just under 20% of our sales in June and July through our car store brand um, were pure digital sales with no interaction with the store except the delivery of the vehicle. Um, so we put efficiencies in, we put systems in and processes. We took advantage of owning Pinewood um, and some of the systems that they had that we maybe weren't utilizing to the level that we should um, and, and took advantage of that. And then coming out of lockdown, we saw um, where our efficiency gains, you know, had started and, and took advantage of that. And that's kind of what kind of led into the decision that we announced today, which is, you know, our new staffing model, our new business model going forward. So, you know, uh, it wasn't like we were, uh, uh, no, no one was resting on their laurels or taking a break during lockdown. Um, I think we got the biggest and highest production out of the management team uh, without selling any cars, but, uh, um, you know, their minds and efforts were put to good use. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is not just symptomatic of the, of the car industry, but in, in all sectors, really, the more people are encouraged to use online services, you know, the, the fewer people that are needed but, but, you know, with the brands who are selling those products, it's just the fact of life, really, isn't it? Exactly. And listen, cars are, are, are a little bit different than, than certain other, you know, retail aspects. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're trying to sell a 40 or 50,000 pound car, it's pretty hard to do that purely online. Cars are tactile. You got to touch them, taste them, feel them, experience them. Uh, the example I give is a, you know, a Porsche. I mean, you know, it's hard to justify a 100,000 pound Porsche until you sit in one. And then you start it up and you hear that, uh, you know, the roar of that engine, you feel that nice vibration and you hit the accelerator, um, you're sold. Um, I, I don't know if VR is good enough to sit here and replicate that yet, but uh, um, so there's still going to be a, a large role for brick and mortar and even with used vehicles, but a higher percentage of the transaction is going to have to be completed online. It's what customers want. Um, it's what they expect out of most other things. Uh, you know, coming from the U.S., uh, grocery delivery is not that big of a thing. Here, it is the norm. Uh, you sit here and you look at that and go, well, if people are willing to get someone else pick out their, uh, their you know, fruits and vegetables, you know, why wouldn't they sit here and want to transact a good portion of their car buying experience online? Save time, save, save, time, save money, um, you know, and even the experience portion of it. So I, I think it bodes well for us on the things that we've done. Um, but yeah, the market's going to change. Yeah. Um, on another note, you know, you've introduced uh, a new corporate look for your brands to, yep. to promote the Pendragon name. I'm, what was what was the feeling behind that? Listen, Pen, uh, you know, Pendragon's got a story past, um, a lot of good, um, maybe a couple of things, maybe not so good. Uh, you know, rather than change the whole name, it was just kind of, you know, kind of give it a, a refresh look and make it a little bit more, uh, you know, modern uh, and, and more towards the times that we are and more of that thing with a looking forward. Uh, you know, type uh, aspect of things versus kind of trying to remember the past. Um, you know, the only thing I look at the past is just to remember it, not to make the same mistakes um, and look to the future to sit here and how do we improve and grow our business. Yeah. Now, um, look, just looking at the market, now there are predictions that the new car market would be down considerably this year, obviously. Mm -hmm. What's your expectation? I mean, could we see half a million fewer registrations <sighs> more than that? What do you think? You know, you know, James, if, if I could predict that accurately, I wouldn't have to do this job. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's so many factors that, that go into that. Um, I think the UK in some ways might be better off than certain other countries. There was a lot of inventory that was produced and put in the country um, to kind of uh, stave off Brexit and what the impact may be on, on that end of it. 
um, with the complete lockdown for the time that we had compared to other parts of the world um, that we're still kind of trading to some aspects or, or another, it's given us some inventory and some pent-up demand to get through this year. Um, I think the challenges and the unknowns are um, you keep hearing factories getting shut down because of a COVID outbreak or uh, the supply chains within the OEM uh, you know, channels are, are difficult. And um, I, I look back to when the tsunami hit Japan um, shortly after the recession. And, uh, you know, there was in Southeast Asia, there was a small uh, uh, supplier that made uh, speedometer needles. Um, but they're the only ones that made them because they were, uh, you know, fluorescent. They're like the only ones that made them in the world. And like 60% of the world's production relied on this one company making, you know, a speedometer needle. And, you know, so you're starting to see aspects of where certain vendors, um, certain suppliers are having to shut down for periods of time. And it's affecting supply chain, you know, greatly. So I don't know what the inventory is you know, going to look like going forward. And I think you've got two things that are going to affect it. First off, um, you know, what's going to happen after the furlough scheme runs its course? I think there's a lot of redundancies that are being um, kind of masked um, by the furlough scheme. And, and when those things truly hit and so the reality kind of hits the e economy, um, that may put a downward uh, – trend on big ticket items, big ticket purchases, which obviously autos fall into. Um, we still have Brexit that everyone's forgot about, I guess, uh, at least in automotive, we're not talking about it to the way we were pre uh, pandemic. Um, and then, you know, what's, you know, you know, what's the, the, the near term look like? So there's just so many caveats. You know, I think SMT says uh, they were going to be down 27%. I think some brands are going to be down less and some brands are going to be down more. And uh, some of it's just going to be which, uh, which side of that do you land on and which stores do you have and which ones do you not have? So uh, there's no way to accurately predict that. Yeah. Um, finally, Bill, um, is now the time the government really needs to step in and give all of us a bit of support? So, so I, got, I got asked that in, in before. And, and, and like I just said, as we get through October, and you know the full effect of uh, of unemployment and some of the economic carnage that's been caused by the pandemic hits. Uh, and let me backpedal. I think what the government's done so far with the furlough scheme has been um, nothing short of miraculous. I think it was a great decision. I think it's played out very well. I think the rates holiday is another thing that, that was very, uh, they were timely with it. Um, they were on the spot with it. And I think both of those things have saved jobs and saved businesses. Um, but as we get out of this, something I think is going to have to be done. Because if you just wait on basic economic principles to build that demand back up, that's going to be a long, long road to hoe. So I, I think, yeah, I mean, whether it's a rates holiday, um, continues of that holiday. Uh, I know it was a, I mean, a scrappage scheme. Uh, in the U.S., we call it cash or clunkers. But if it's a scrappage scheme based on getting out older, uh, less uh, fuel efficient, less uh, you know, emission uh, efficient vehicles and putting in more fuel efficient vehicles, you know, more uh, vehicles that uh, have better, uh, you know, environmental impacts out there. I think something's going to have to be done. I mean, a VAT reduction, I think, is the easiest. Um, and, and I think it would spur um, the industry on, you know, quite well. And the perfect example is what they did with housing with the stamp duty, right? That went away. Look what happened to housing. I mean, it just skyrocketed. And I think the same thing would happen if, once again, I'm not a politician, but, you know, if the VAT got cut in half, what would happen? I think a lot of people would go buy cars. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bill. We have to leave Thanks, it James. there. Thank okay. you very much for your time today. Really appreciate no it. Well, um, thank you. I hope you and your family are safe. Thank you very much indeed. And, Talk to you soon. Uh, until next time on Cardio Live, thank you very much and bye-bye. Thank you.